everybody! In this video, we will focus on designing classes using active learning methods, which may help your students to develop their soft skills. To design classes in the most efficient way, it is important to take a few steps. You need to select most effective teaching and learning activity that supports your students in achieving skills you want them to achieve. Next, you need to develop a detailed plan on how this activity will be implemented in your classes, and finally, you need to integrate effectively the active learning methodology in your curricula. When you know which soft skills you want to achieve with your students, you can start to think how to do it. And here, active methods appear as a solution. Active learning refers to a broad range of teaching strategies which engage students or trainees as active participants in their learning. The focus is on how to learn rather than what to learn, placing the learner in the heart of the process. In active learning, students are engaged in doing something rather than simply listening to a lecture or passively receiving information. They are discussing, writing, debating, creating, discovering, processing and involved in higher order thinking, for example, analysis, synthesis. It is important to remember what the main idea of active learning is and what goals and challenges you want to set for your students, and then to choose the right methods and put them to your classes. An interesting tool in which we can find a collection of different methods of active learning is eLearn Dynamic Toolkit. It was designed in order to support the acquisition of soft skills using innovative teaching and training methodologies. It describes a series of innovative practices and related learning activities, taking into consideration the critical issues typical for a lot of universities related to high number of students for each classroom, more than 80, rich physical spaces, and unbalanced relationship between large programs and limited classroom time. Dynamic Toolkit is organized as an open online tool with searchable and downloadable items. All collected teaching and learning activities and methods can be filtered using four different categories. Soft skills, modes, blended, face-to-face, -face, online, outdoor, other, timings, and group size. After choosing interesting criteria, the list of methods is displayed and we can choose the method we are interested in. All information can be read online or can be downloaded as PDF file and printed if needed. During pilots, different methods from the Dynamic Toolkit were tested by teachers. For example, mind maps, design thinking, brainstorming, response systems, role plays, elevator pitch, feedback exchange, and others. Teachers were choosing these methods, which could be easily adopted to their courses in which specific skills are needed, example, decision making or problem solving. What is important, active learning is not only an effective strategy in traditional classroom, but also in the online environment where students are being asked to take a more responsible and active role in learning. It was especially crucial during spring semester of 2020, when because of lockdown, many teachers had to move their courses completely online. As we know from the teacher from Milan, who was testing classroom's response system, it was at the beginning scary to do the pilot totally online, but on the other hand, it was even more important to use active learning methodology in a virtual environment to reinforce the engagement of students. Another teacher in Rome used elevator pitch method in his online course. Although usually students during final lesson were presenting their speeches in present, this year, all speeches were recorded and uploaded in a shared folder. Teacher created a peer assessment activity in order to allow students to see some of their colleagues' videos and give them some feedback. Also in Bremen, in this difficult situation, another active learning method, feedback exchange, was implemented in online course in order to enable a certain exchange of students despite the missing presence. Thanks to this, it was possible to develop some soft skills like communication, self-reflection and critical thinking unsynchronously and online as optimally as possible. Of course, in all cases, the original plan had to be modified slightly, as for example in Milan, there was forcing a brief moment of peer discussion in pairs, what in an online session wouldn't be effective in terms of time. But this only confirms that active learning is flexible. So, when you plan to design the activity, remember to take into account the following. 
Define the beginning and the end. A clear purpose and learning objective. Complete and understandable directions. A plan for assessing the objective and mechanism for providing feedback to students. A description of a technology or tool being used in the exercise. Remember to adopt it to the situation and take into account various constraints. A detailed plan is very helpful in carrying out successful classes using active methods. As you can hear from one of a teacher from Warsaw, he was testing mind maps. She had planned time slots for a given elements of her classes, like introduction, presenting the problem to be solved, work in four persons groups for solving the problem, and at the end, summary of the whole activity. Group work using mind maps method and flip chart worked really well. The contact with group members, exchanging views, opinions on potential causes or solutions had an impact on stimulating creativity. Just like during brainstorming, the ideas of other people stimulate students to give creative ideas. They could also develop or supplement the ideas of others. Thanks to that, they indicate solutions which better respond to the examinate problem. What is also important and was underlined by most teachers is reflection and feedback after classes with the use of active methods. As we know from one of the French teacher who was testing the design thinking method, at the beginning and end of each session, the class had a general warm or wrap up meeting to reflect on what they have done and learned during the lecture and the activities performed. In another French pilot in which the brainstorming method was tested, Feedback was offered after each passage to identify good and bad practices and ways of improvement. In Rome, where also clinical role play took place, the final step of the whole exercise was debriefing. In a plenary session, in the form of class discussion, they debriefed students on what they have learned. They also analyzed the videos with the risk manager, the quality manager, and the clinical manager in order to explain errors made by residents. If we would like to sum up, we must underline that active methods can be useful both in traditional and online environments, as they are so flexible and easy adopted to different circumstances. Remember about the reflection phase when the whole process can be summed up and students can obtain additional information about the work they have done. How do you think? What else is really important to be taken into consideration when designing active learning? Which methods from ELEN Dynamic Toolkit would be the most suitable for you and why? Are there any other methods you are using which support soft skills? Share your opinion with us and others. Thank you.